The 2014 Ebola crisis made us all acutely aware of just how vulnerable we all are in the face of pandemic viruses that have the potential to wipe out a fraction of the human race. Those working on the front lines of the Ebola war had to wait 10 to 21 days just to get a diagnosis. Even the best hospitals in the world relied upon a thermometer, a 400-year-old technology, to wait for a fever to show up before any kind of diagnosis, quarantine, or treatment could be given. This lack of early diagnosis meant a lot of time was wasted while the Ebola virus continued to replicate and spread havoc. But it doesn't have to be this way. Imagine a world where with a simple tricorder-like device, one can detect the Ebola virus in real time with nanoscale precision, even before patients show symptoms, and stop outbreaks well before they become global pandemics. You may think this is science fiction, but it is not. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you Gene Radar, our simple mobile tricorder device that can diagnose any disease with a genetic fingerprint in real time with gold standard accuracy and at a price point that's over 10 times cheaper than anything comparable on the market today. I'm Dr. Anita Goel of NanoBioSim. As a physicist and physician, I've spent the last 20 years of my life at the nexus of physics, nanotechnology, and biomedicine from which we've created Gene Radar. Today, we commit to accelerate the deployment of gene radar in Africa, starting with 50 health centers across West Africa. With our global partners, we will provide 500,000 people with access to real-time nanoscale precision diagnosis. I invite all of you here today to join me in this journey. What the internet did for access to information, what cell phones did to the telecommunications industry, that's what we at NanoBioSim are doing for healthcare. We are mobilizing, personalizing, and decentralizing the next generation of healthcare. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Imagine preventing a drought from turning into a famine. Imagine containing an outbreak before it turns into an epidemic. Imagine enabling local organizations to save lives without having to wait for external assistance. I'm Sean Lowry from the START Network, a group of 24 leading international NGOs, some of whom are CGI members and are in the room today. In order to face today's increasingly complex challenges, the humanitarian system needs to evolve. Now, most of disaster response is done by NGOs, but their business model is reactive. We all know that earlier action can save more lives and protect livelihoods. A more systemic and proactive approach to financing is needed, and it's possible. That's why we're partnering with Box, Airbnb, and many others to build a new humanitarian economy. To begin, we'll take the START Fund to scale, which enables funding to local organizations within 72 hours, anywhere in the world, of a crisis onset. We'll also build three new financial mechanisms using loans and insurance. That said, we're just getting started, and we're looking for new partners to co-create this with us. Join us. Thank you. Cities across the globe are plagued with ever-increasing rates of air pollution, impacting human health and changing our climate. In California, our cities suffer from some of the worst pollution in the nation. This contributes to more than a billion dollars per year in asthma hospitalizations alone. Everyone can agree that cutting air pollution is a good thing. I'm Davida Herzl, CEO of Acoma. We are a San Francisco-based company that designs and deploys large-scale environmental sensor networks. In order to begin to address the systemic challenge of air quality, we need a new and transformative shared awareness about the air around us, the air we breathe and live in. And so this year, Acoma and Google are committing to map air quality in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and the Central Valley of California. Through this program, Google Street View cars will be equipped with Acoma's new mobile sensing platform to measure hyperlocal environmental data at the street level. 
Data will be made available to these communities, to scientists, to air quality experts, as well as on Google Earth and Google Maps. This commitment represents the next frontier of awareness about air pollution and will lead to a new class of data-driven solutions that improve both human health and planetary health.